Welcome back, everybody. As you can see, I have ground all these pieces so they are perfectly flat. They're not shiny because we're going to work on that moving forward, but they are flat. And when I rub my fingers on them, I can't actually feel any wires. That's how smooth and flat they are. Now, if you get to the grinding stage and you find that there are areas in your pieces that are still shiny, like little divots, what you need to do is pause, go back, put a little bit of either clear or opaque enamel, depending on what it was, just a little dab on each of the areas that's still shiny, refire it, and then grind it again, because you want everything to be exactly built up to the evenness, and that's how you get a really great finish. And so, also, if you're just doing straight up cloisonne enamel and not champlevé enamel, um, you don't, you can kind of skip this next step because what we're doing with this next step is we're actually going to be working on finishing the silver component of this. So there's a little bit more work to do with the, the champlevé, but the end result is you don't have to make a separate setting for it because this is just going to be ready to go. So without further ado, let's move on to the next step, which I call polishing. The next step is really about just putting a little bit of elbow grease in it. I use a variety of different sandpapers. Uh, I buy them from Rio and they're color coded. Um, I start with the green, which is a 400 grit sandpaper. And then after that, I'll move on to the gray, which is 800. And then the blue is 1200. And then finally the pink is 4000. We're not gonna get to the pink for a while yet. And so what I'm really going to do is, they sell them in 8x10, 8x11 sheets. I cut them into strips, and I have an old paint stick that you can see I got from Lowe's for free. And I just glued some felt on either side just to give it a little bit of extra springiness. And then I just wrap it around like this. It's hard to do. There we go. You can see I used a little bit of it like that. And I have a little water off camera. And because these are cufflinks, I've, I'm gonna do them on this thing that I was working on them before because it holds them nice and flat. If you're not doing cufflinks and you're doing something flat, you don't need to have that. You can go right on the tea towel and kind of work on the edge like that. And the tea towel will kind of hold everything in place. So we've got our piece, so we're gonna dip it in the water. And remember, we're starting with the 400 grit green sandpaper. And I'll see if I can find a link to that sandpaper because I use these sandpapers for everything. And really, it's just a matter of, you know, going at it with some elbow grease. Because when, depending on what kind of grinding you did, there's going to be a lot of scratches on the exterior silver piece. And you're going to spend probably the most time with this green sandpaper. And I just kind of keep going. I look at it and I'm looking at the silver to see how I'm trying to get it to be without any scratches, obviously. Um, also, you don't want to forget the edges. Um, I've ground the edges, but as for each one of these, I'm just going to do the edges as well. And what I'll do is I'll do all of these with the greens because it's easier um, and then I'll switch to the gray and if when I switch to the gray I still see some scratches that I can't seem to get rid of you gotta back up and go back to the green so usually I'll kind of go back and forth between green and gray a few times until all of the scratches disappear in the silver um, and you can kind of see this piece right here I've taken that through the green and the gray, and what I'm really looking for is no scratches along this. And so this is looking pretty good, so yeah, there's really not that much to say about it except, you know, just keep at it. And I'm going to do a little bit of the 1200 because I've done the green and the gray on this piece already, and I'm going to make a little strip. And I remember when I first got started with the polishing, I just was like, what am I doing wrong? It's that's just something to be said for, you have to be honest with yourself. You know, if you see a scratch, you know you see a scratch. And you just have to, the scratch is not going to magically disappear. You have to, even if you've worked your way all the way up to the pink, uh, you see, if you still see a scratch, you're going to have to go back to the, the blue, I mean, the green or the gray. 
Um, so, and with this piece, I don't need this, so I'm gonna do right on the edge there. Like even with this piece, I'm seeing a little bit of undulation right here, you can kinda see. So I might even go back at this point, back to the grain, and see if I can smooth that out. Um, there's really no shortcuts on this stage. That is that. It's me again. Look, we're in front of the kiln right now, so that is very exciting. I have finished all these pieces. I've polished them with all the sandpapers, and then I washed them with soapy water and rinsed them in distilled water so they were nice and clean. And I'm gonna do something called the final fire polish right now. So let's, which is basically we put it back in the kiln and remelt the glass uh, and hopefully we won't have any trouble. I've got my kiln right here, so let's go ahead and do it. You can load up as many as you want. Obviously it's a matter of comfort level for how many pieces you want to put in. But pretty much, I've got my kiln set to 1450. It's probably gonna take about two to three minutes. I've just, I've got a window and oh my God, if you get one of those kilns with a window, you can never go back because I didn't, I thought windows were totally lame because I only saw the window at the craft center and it was all fogged up. But when you get a brand new window and you can see what's going on, it is awesome. So that is that. I'm probably going to pause it right here because you don't really need to watch me watch this for two minutes. So we will come right back. We'll be right back. Well, and I'm looking at the pieces and I can see that there's some fine cracks that I'm waiting for it to heal. Um, I'm also looking at the trivets because when they, if they start glowing like super red hot orange, I've probably overfired. But um, this is our last firing. So we want to make sure that we get a nice smooth firing. And also I pulled up a chair because you know, there's a lot of standing. So I'm going to do that. And these look like they are ready. You see that little devil one has one little crack. All right, these are ready to come out. There we go. Always deal with your kiln before you deal with what you've pulled out of it. Close it, make sure you're good to go. And um, we're gonna let these cool and have a look at them. Hello everybody. We have fired every one of these pieces one last time to bring the shine out. And the last thing we're gonna do for these smaller pieces is we're gonna give them a tumble in the tumbler. I know it sounds crazy, and I didn't realize it was at all controversial until I put it on Facebook yesterday because I filmed it from different orders. Um, but this is not something that maybe you are aware of that you can do. You don't need to do this for straight up cloisonne. This is just for Champlivet pieces. Uh, we want to give the exterior silver a really nice polish, and this gives it a really nice luster that I like that kind of, uh, Feel like it holds up really well to wear and tear like every day um, so that's what we're going to do um, i use stainless steel shot right here you can see um, all round bits i actually have two sizes some little tiny maybe that's four millimeters and then some round stuff um, it's also very therapeutic it's so nice um, so anyway put my steel shot in my tumbler thing And I don't know how many pieces I have there. Probably I'm gonna do like, break them into two bits. Doesn't even matter. So about, maybe one more. This many, like I like to do about a handful at a time. I don't wanna put all of them in all at once. So nice handful. So what is that? A dozen little pieces. If it were just one big piece, that would be fine too. So we put that in. And then we have some water. You can use regular water. I don't have a sink, so we're just going to give some of this distilled. And I'm just pouring it in just so it covers right the top of the... Uh, you can see it's not very much. And then I like to use a product from Rio called Super Sunshine. And 
feel like Rio should send me a little gift certificate because I'm totally talking up the real products. But this is a good product and I'm almost out of it too. But that's all right. We're just going to do say splash. Maybe one more little splash. I don't know. That seems right because I want to make sure I have enough because I need to do this again next week and I don't feel like ordering it. So we will set that aside. It's all ready to go. And my one thing, if you have one of these, if you haven't bought a tumbler, um, don't buy this one. Uh, this one is a huge pain in the ass. They have ones where you like take off the lid and you just screw it. It's so much nicer. Um, this is a, you have to kind of stick this in and then you get this rubby thing. And it's really hard. I don't know why, but unfortunately I've had this one for years. And I keep hoping it'll break. So I have to buy a new one so I can get something different, but it, actually that was good. And then you, sometimes this one you think it's on, but then it's leaking water. Who knows? Anywho, there we go. Let's plug that in. Maybe 45 minutes, really not that much longer. Um, we'll probably get as good as you're going to get. So we will leave it with that. And um, there is, if you're doing some bigger pieces, some more finishing that we're going to go into, but we have to end this at some point. But this is going to be, when this is, comes out of the tumbler, is going to be done for these smaller pieces for me. Uh, well, I need to attach the bindings, but they will be good to go. And um, so that is it for now. I usually don't leave this unattended because it also tends to leak because of that. I hate this tumbler. Sorry, tumbler. I'm sorry. I don't hate you. Anyway, that is it. Well, it's been 45 minutes, so we're going to call it. I'm going to unplug it. Apparently, it didn't want to be unplugged. Whew. I didn't realize how loud that was. So. I did a couple other things for 45 minutes or so while I did that. So now is the moment of truth. Um, and I can reuse this liquid. If this was the last, if this, I was just doing one batch, I would just dump this out in, you know, down the drain into a colander. But since I want to reuse for my next batch, I'm going to kind of maybe fish out the pieces. That's all. Ooh, they're pretty too. And I can't even show you right now, but they're beautiful. And I'm going to take you some, I'm going to put some photos up. Um, probably want to rinse them out. Hold on one second. Oh my goodness. Like I said, I don't have a sink. No. Bless art space. So we can just put them into the water as you fish, fish them out. But they're looking great. Trust me on this. So I'm fishing these out and I will put some photos on. I will get those findings attached and call these done so anyway so that i bet wraps up our video about how to enamel do the grinding and the polishing um but basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull these all out and then i'm just going to dump those right back in there we go loops yeah it's so much easier if you could just dump it out in the colander but i don't want to waste the liquid but it's like palm olive so we've got that. We'll put the rest of these in. And we'll put it on. Oh, and this thing, it's even harder to do when it's already wet. Um, but so basically what we'll do is put the lid back on. This thing, you know, 45 more minutes and our pieces are done. Yay! It's been a long process, but I hope that this has been helpful to you as an enamelist and you know I just have to say that my way not may not be the best way I'm sure there's probably a ton of good ways to finish enamels and so try my way maybe I'm gonna try your way too so anyway thanks again and um, all these pieces look so nice they're like little candies I could just them oh this one's so cute anyway I'm Sandra McEwen and this has been grinding and finishing After the final fire, the piece is brilliantly shiny, it's smooth, it's glassy, it's lovely, 
And to be honest, for the most part, you know, you might just decide to end your collet done, as it were. But for some pieces, especially ones that are really large or extra fancy, um, you might want to take it to the next step. And so I, you can see this is the dragon piece. It's very exciting. And it's been ground. It's been polished. It's had its final fires. You can see it's ultra shiny. But what I want to do is I'm going to do some more work on it to really bring out the luster of it because every time you put something in the kiln and the glass melts you know it, nothing melts perfectly smooth and so where the wires are you know it tends to kind of have these very subtle undulations i want to smooth those out um, without sacrificing the the piece and the shininess of it so here's what i do it's very exciting i start with i kind of go backwards a little bit i've got two pieces of polishing paper and we're going to go back to the 1200 which is the blue there we go and as if you remember from polishing we have our polishing stick and i'm going to and i know it's hard to go back to polishing after you've done your final fire because you think oh my gosh what am i going to do but let's do it together all right, so we're going to start. And this is just going to kind of give, make it perfectly flat. Because after you pull it out of the kiln, if you close your eyes and run your fingers over it, you can still, you can feel the, the wires again. They've raised just a hair. And it's seriously, it's so subtle. Um, so I go back, and this is... gonna smooth it all out. I'm actually probably smoothing out the silver more than the glass on this particular stage. And we want to go nice and I like to do it by hand. already feeling better. Really. All right. So now let me dry it off a little bit. where we are and yeah I can already feel that it's a little it's way smoother it's smooth to the touch again but now we've, we've roughed up the glass a little bit so we kind of have to bring that back and so then I'm going to go to the 4000 which is the pink let's get a strip of that Yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this particular thing, except just keep doing it. All right, I'm going to keep going at this for just maybe another two minutes or so, and then I will tell you the final step. The final stage of the polishing is I uh, use a product called Super Serum. Super Serum. Here it is right here. And it is a really great way to polish the glass. Um, it comes in a powder form and you always, always, always want to wear your respirator. I'm wearing it one right now um, because even when I do the videos, this stuff is stuff you don't want in your lungs. So please do that. And I've put it in a little bowl and I've mixed it with some water so it's a paste. Very exciting. And then I have my handy rotary tool. And this is a, um, sham, I don't know how you say it, chamois, uh, a little leather uh, wheel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get, I might even just dip the whole thing in, you know, 
because we really want to get a high polish on this thing. And I have a box back here to kind of, so it doesn't go everywhere. And then just keep it wet. a subtle difference uh, but you will be able to feel the difference and you will know in your heart how much better it looks all right this is great still not totally done I am actually gonna put this in the tumbler yes I know it's crazy town but the tumbler is really gonna give the silver piece a really nice final polish so I'm gonna rinse that off again and put it in the tumbler and there you have it oops we'll set it right there 